This video is brought to you by Insights.gg. It has been the longest offseason in history, but we finally got to see some top tier Overwatch again as Season 4 of the Overwatch League kicked off this weekend. With some stunning upsets and many exciting games, this season is already shaping up to be the spiciest one yet. In this video, we'll be highlighting a few micro plays that, whether through skill, luck, or even a combination of the two, might go unnoticed in the heat of the moment, but still deserve their own time in the limelight. Despite being ranked near the bottom of the table in almost all preseason power rankings, the Houston Outlaws surprised just about everyone by taking a hard-fought 3-2 win over the Dallas Fuel and the San Francisco Shock, both of whom had been regarded as being among the teams to beat this season. However, the defending champions did not make it easy for them, breaking out a simple yet effective play on Oasis Gardens to help bring the game back to 2-2 and force a decider. After winning the previous fight, the Shock are looking to snowball their advantage by winning the next fight with Super's Earth Shatter, the only ultimate they have available. Nero boosts Striker up so he can stand on the ledge over the doorway. And luckily for San Francisco, Houston do indeed decide to take the route to the point. From there, all it takes is a little bit of coordination for Striker's flashbang to stun Jangu, dropping his shield at the same time that Super's Earth Shatter comes through. It's a simple play, but one that will surely leave the Shock's opponents looking up more often, just in case another sneaky McCree is hiding in wait for them. Okay. No one expects What is the plan here? Is it, uh, it's gonna be a flash. Oh, oh my oh, god! Oh, oh. Strike is cheeky. God, his spidey senses were tingling. He just drops down and apprehends these now duels. Oh. San Francisco now at 32% on the clock, and <laughs> I don't know how he got up there, but uh. bloody hell. It only works so, yeah. once, Matt, but my god, it works. Oh. With the current meta featuring a decent amount of rush, Lucio players were granted the opportunity to strut their stuff on their signature hero, and they did not disappoint, setting up their teammates for huge plays with their boops. In this play, the Fusion are in a bit of a spot after Crystal's EMP catches three, but Toby successfully avoids it and drops the sound barrier, allowing Carpe to reclaim two kills. However, a Space Jam combo from the Valiant, that is, combining the Graviton Surge and Meteor Strike, allows the Valiant to trade out the kills, and Hotba is forced to use his self-destruct to get his mech back. Toby sees the Valiant trying to escape across the bridge and reacts quickly, booping Shou Chang and High B into the line of sight of the self-destruct, breaking High B's shield and taking out the enemy Zarya. The fusion close out the round 100-0. Toby was not the only Lucio player with some tricky boot plays over the weekend. On Blizzard World, third point between the Atlanta Reign and the Toronto Defiant, Kai attempts to stop Toronto's push with his Deadeye in the back of the point. Neist reacts quickly to put up an ice wall, completely blocking Kai's line of sight. However, Massa is completely ready for this. Even as Kai makes his way to the left in an attempt to get around the wall, Massa goes the other way and boops three members of the Defiant into Kai's line of sight, allowing him to take out Hisu. It's worth noting just how quickly this play happened. Massa boops the Toronto members out almost the second that Nice Walls goes up, giving the Defiant no time to even catch their breath and wait out the Deadeye. Instead, Atlanta starts speeding in to capitalize on their main advantage, and are able to win the final fight from there. Spawn camping, buying so much time. The Deadeye from Kai. See what he can do, what a boom! Eichenwald has long been hailed as the site of some of the most iconic plays in Overwatch history. Think Eye of the Kaiser, the Runaway Curse, and multiple legendary boops off the bridge. Clearly, it's a map that allows teams to show their mettle, and this week was no different, as we saw teams use their enormous Overwatch IQ to great effect. We've already talked about the Philly LAV match, but let's revisit it for another great play, this time by Fusion's off-tank, Hotba. With the cart approaching the finishing line on Philly's attack, Shou Cheng's Graviton Surge could be deadly in stopping the cart, especially as the Fusion only have about 30 seconds in the time bank and will likely struggle to make it back to the point in time. However, Hotpa spots a fatal error by the Valiant. They have stacked all of their players on one side of the point. Mulloran is the first to contest, but is forced to use his Translocator early to stay alive. Crystal's Tracer then fails to move onto the cart as he is expecting his teammates to make the first move so he can move onto the backline. 
However, before they can make their move, Hotba uses his boosters straight into the mass of Valiant players, booping them away from the cart and allowing it to glide into the finish before they can even react. Full credit has to go to Waya here though. He recognized the play and popped Transcendence in an attempt to reach the cart with the increased movement speed. But unfortunately, it was too late. A reasonable job, just slowing the game down. What happened to the tie from Rascal? Crystal gets solo kill onto Rascal while he's trying to get touch. a kill they on the that tire. Push it back. Oh, oh, they had a grab. They had a grab. That's, well, yeah, that's a painful one. No. There were two major surprises over the weekend. Firstly, the Houston Outlaws' thrilling 6-map 3-2 win over the defending champion San Francisco Shock. And in this match, the Chengdu Hunters clean 3-0 win over the Shanghai Dragons. We'll be taking a look at their Eichenwall defense, where they ran a rarely seen Torbjorn defense that held the Dragons to a grand total of 0% on their attack. First, let's take a look at the Hunters' team composition. The Hunters are running a double bubble composition with Winston and Zarya, aiming to get massive amounts of charge by bubbling Winston as he jumps into the enemy team, while McCree is great at dealing damage from both afar and close quarters. However, it's the Hunters' second DPS that is more interesting. We've seen several heroes being run next to the McCree, usually Mei, Tracer, Echo, or Sombra, each of which have their own unique rationale. The Torb, however, brings something different to the table. We've talked about him before on the channel, but essentially he acts as a more versatile reaper, able to spam away into the narrow choke with his left click, and assist his team when rushing in with his right click. His turret is also useful in checking flankers, and generally being annoying as the enemy team has to devote some resources to deal with it. As the hunter set up, we can see their general game plan for this point. Jinmu puts his turret off to the left side, where it stays out of the way of incoming fire but is also able to damage enemy flankers. Meanwhile, the hunter's tanks and supports aim to control the bridge over the choke point, giving them a powerful staging area for jumps into the backline, and to generally rain down damage onto the dragons. From his position a distance away from the choke point, Jinmu can poke away with leave. But when crunch time comes and Shanghai starts chasing his tanks up the stairs, we also see him using the speed boost from his overload ability to get in some good damage. Shanghai's game plan is quite simple. They aim to rush down a single hunter player with their speed boost and massive close range damage with heroes like Reaper and Reinhardt, especially those playing on the bridge. On the face of it, this seems pretty solid, considering several members of the hunters lack movement abilities. But let's see how the first fight plays out. Here, we see Shanghai's first attack, as they immediately charge into the room and up the stairs, a maneuver that will repeat several times throughout the match. However, on the way in, Void takes a massive amount of damage from the Hunter's DPS. Monk hits a biotic grenade onto Fleda and Li Zhegan, and Gaga jumps in on Winston while Elsa bubbles the retreating Monk. Suddenly, all of the Hunter's bases are covered. Monk can retreat to safety across the bridge, especially with his sleep onto Fleta, which nearly takes him out before Izayaki's invincibility field saves him. Gaga is dealing massive amounts of cleave damage as Winston. The Hunter's DPS are still pouring huge amounts of damage onto the grouped up dragons, and even if Shanghai gets some picks, as they do, odds are that the Hunters will be able to trade them out, which they also do. And as we see this fight play out, Fate is suddenly forced back up with his shield to prevent his teammates from dying to the Zarya and Brigitte in front. Meanwhile, all the Hunters have to do is take back the high ground where they can, and drop off it if things get too dangerous, making Shanghai essentially play a game of cat and mouse with them, all while Leave and Jinmu continue putting out damage from the side. And from here on, the Hunters simply have to cycle ultimates to keep winning fights. A nano boost onto Gaga paired with a highly charged Zarya forces the dragons back, and then the Zarya pairs the grav built into the previous fight with Jinmu's Molten Core to clean up the dragons in the next. However, this comp is not invincible. Going back into the first fight, Monk would probably have been taken out if Shanghai had been faster in breaking Elsa's bubble, or if he missed a sleep. In the early stages of the game, if the Hunters are able to secure some kind of advantage, it is very likely that they will lose a crucial member like the Ana, from which point it will be very difficult to continue the defense, especially with the respawn advantage that the offense has. And that's all for this episode of Microplays. You know, people ask us how we find these plays, 
And the way we do it is with Insights.gg. Insights.gg has officially launched version 1.0, integrating their all-in-one VOD review platform with their high-performance game recorder, Insights Capture. Insights Capture allows you to take notes and automatically highlights game events, making it easy for you to review your gameplay after every match. It's free to download, so try it out today. This video was made possible thanks to our wonderful patrons. A massive thank you to everybody on this list and shout out to Jason, Foxy, Lyra, Mav, Nate, Nathan, Oshayo, Sierra, Shampoo, Weaboo, Spartacus, and Yashichi for being Platinum supporters. And an extra special shout out to Steven, Noodles, Marco, Mookie, Daniel, and Juke for being Diamond supporters. Thanks a ton guys, we really appreciate it. If you also want to support our channel and unlock perks, check out the Patreon link in the description below, or join our Discord server. If you want to help us out in a different way, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is also appreciated. My name is Nikita, and thank you for watching.